Hello, this is the AWS Account Administration and Networking for Higher Education presentation. In this section, we'll cover identity and access management. My name is Mike Kuntz, and I'm a Senior Solutions Architect with AWS. AWS Identity and Access Management, otherwise known as IAM, allows you to delegate access to resources in your AWS account to users, EC2 instances, and other services. It allows you to apply granular permissions by using built-in or user-managed policies. It allows you to manage users and groups in your organization's single sign-on systems as well. You can generate time-limited API keys with a security token service. And by using AWS CloudTrail, it allows you to keep audit logs of user activity when using the system. When delegating access, you can do two ways. You can use users and groups, or you can use roles. When using users or groups, they're managed within AWS IAM. Users consist of a name and an optional password or access key. You can set the password strength, rotation, and multi-factor authentication requirements for IAM users. It's important to note that these policies cannot be applied to the root account. You can create static API keys representing a user. You can attach policies to both users and groups or do that individually. For roles, those are similar to a user, except they are assumable by any one or another thing that needs it. You use roles to delegate access to users, EC2 instances, or other AWS services or AWS accounts. There are no static credentials with IAM roles. There are temporary credentials that are created when the role is assumed. When to use users or groups or roles. You would use users and groups when you need API access for machines other than your EC2 instances, such as on-premise servers or developer workstations. You can use users and groups when you want to delegate permissions to other users and groups within the AWS Management Console, or you don't have SSO infrastructure in place, or it is not compatible with IAM. You would want to use roles when you need API access to EC2 instances, when you need to allow an AWS service to access resources and other services, when you want users to access AWS via SSO, or you want to give access to users or groups in other AWS accounts. There are two types of IAM policies. The first, user-based policies. These are attached to an IAM user, group, or role. They let you specify what that user, group, or role can do. For example, Bob can call EC2 Run Instances API. Members of the S3 admins group can use all of the S3 APIs or a user assuming the read-only access role can only call APIs named like describe. Resource-based policies are attached to a resource. These let you specify who has access to the resource and what actions they can perform on it. Supported resources are S3 buckets, Glacier, SNS topics, SQS queues, and AWS KMS encryption keys. User-based policies come in two forms. There's managed policies and inline policies. Managed policies are standalone policies which can be attached to multiple users, groups, and roles. There are AWS managed policies. These are policies that are created and managed by AWS, such as the administrator access or security audit policies. Customer managed policies are managed policies that customers create and manage themselves. The other type of IAM policy, resource-based policies, are inline policies that are created by you and embedded in the resource. In this slide, we show cross-account access. It's an AWS recommended best practice to never share identity and access management credentials. Instead, you would set up cross-account access. Here we show the creation of users, accessing roles in another account to then go do cross-account access. Another supported feature of AWS Identity and Access Management is Identity Federation. This allows you to go and use your existing credentials, log in through Shibboleth, ADFS, or other supported platforms to log into the AWS console and use AWS APIs.